Hi, welcome to the third part of this series on uh, series of videos on Maxwell. In this video, we will take a look at dealing with Maxwell. In the hands-on demo, we will take a look at the configurations available in Maxwell. We will see how to run Maxwell, how to capture events. Uh, related to insert, update, and delete of records, and how to capture the changes in the table DDL. And finally, we will see the Maxwell metrics. We are going to uh, perform these set of operations. The first thing we will do is download Maxwell. Uh, there are late, uh, latest releases as well, so you can pick whichever release uh, looks good. We will untar the, um, the tar file and then we will go inside the Maxwell directory. The other requirement is you should have, we will be running Confluent in local. So Confluent will give us uh, local Kafka. If you want to publish message only to the console, you don't require Kafka. You can push the messages to a file or to a console, but we will be working with Kafka to give you an impression as how things can be, oh, can be done in your actual project. So we are going to start our local Kafka, which will start a schema registry, Kafka broker, and every bunch of other services required. We'll go inside My MySQL and we will take a look at these three variables. These are the three variables uh, which are required by Maxwell. We will see their configurations and we will create a user test user with a password test password which will have a, a select replication client and replication slave permissions. Let's take a look at Maxwell configuration. This is the way Maxwell is run. Maxwell is an executable script. You pass the configuration file. Let's ha have an understanding of the configuration. First of all, the log level is which decides whether you want info level logs or debug level logs or warning level logs. Every Maxwell client has got a unique identifier. Say you are running multiple Maxwell connecting to different databases and the position of all those Maxwell is stored in your central uh, independent database. So if there are multiple Maxwell running, how do you distinguish which Maxwell is doing what? So there has to be some kind of identifier to every Maxwell. This is recommended. By default, the identifier is Maxwell, but you can choose your own identifier. Then you give the details of the server from where you would like to replicate the host of the server, the password, user, port, and the replica server ID. Since Maxwell connects as a replicator, you will have to provide some identifier to that replicator. Every replicator has a unique identifier in MySQL. And this is, uh, you have to ensure that this ID does not exist for any other replicator in the same, uh, for the same MySQL server. Then you specify in which database you would Maxwell should save its the schema information and the position information. This again can be the same RDS or it can be a different RDS. Say you don't have a right permission to the pair to, to the source RDS, you would like to choose a different RDS where Maxwell will keep its position information and schema information as well. You can apply a filter where you can restrict which tables and databases you would like to capture and which you would like to exclude. It you, uh, accepts a wildcard. So we are excluding everything except all the tables coming inside a real-time analytics database. Then you can specify producer specific settings. What is your producer? If you would like to push to Kafka, you set up as Kafka. If you would like to, if you don't have Kafka, you can put it like STD out and it means uh, it will publish every uh, JSON message on your screen. Or you can uh, push, uh, uh, put a producer as file and pass one more configuration like the file name, which file in the local you would like to use to contain the messages. If you use Kafka, then you give the bootstrap servers and the topic. So here my topic name is dynamically resolved by Maxwell. My topic name will have a CDC prefix and then it will contain the name of the database of the MySQL and the name of the table coming from MySQL to which the record belongs to. If you have to apply Kafka specific configurations, you can use Kafka dot and provide Kafka specific configurations. In Kafka, uh, the topics are partitioned. 
and uh, it's not mandatory to provide the key when passing the message to Kafka. But if you would like to have a certain kind of ordering or certain kind of behavior, you can provide this information that on which field the JSON messages produced by Maxwell will be partitioned when it, when it goes to Kafka. So we have the chosen primary key, like the, whatever is the primary key of the record based on that value, push it to a specific partition. And usually the partitions are decided based on the hash modulus. Do you like to capture DDL? Uh, if there is a change in MySQL table and the DDL changes, if you would like to capture that, output that, you can specify it and you can also specify what is the corresponding Kafka topic to keep those DDLs. Maybe you would like to have a different Kafka topic where DDL changes are stored and a different Kafka topic where actual messages are stored. Then, then you have to, you have control over what kind of information you would like to output. Since the input messages are coming from the bin logs, they contain lots of information. You may not be interested to capture all of them, but you have the option to choose whether you would like to output the bin log position, the position from which this record was picked, the server ID of the actual source, the thread ID, which is usually the client identifier, which created that entry in the MySQL. If a field has a null value, do, uh, do you want that field in the output? Do you want to output the uh, schema ID? Do you want to output the transaction ID or commit info? In a single transaction, multiple records would have been affected. So in your downstream application, if you want to combine or access all the records which got changed in a single transaction, your commit info can be helpful in your downstream applications. But again, you have uh, you can mix and match which things you would like to output and which uh, fields you would not like to output. Finally, you have information around metrics. There's a metric server in the Maxwell. So on which port does it run? What is the prefix of every metric? Do you want to run this uh, diagnostic or not? So you can control the configurations around your metric server as well. Let's go back to the setup. So we are going to download Maxwell. We are going to start Kafka. So let's start these things because they are going to take some time. And by the time they are done, we, we, be, we will be covering the other steps which we have to follow. So I'm downloading and uh, setting up. Uh, I'm, I'm downloading and untarring Maxwell. In the next step, I'm going to start uh, start my Kafka. And if you would like to see, I have a confluent in uh, executable in my environment path. This is my actual executable. I have shared the link how you can download. Uh, confluent on your local. Let's go to MySQL and see configure the values of these three variables. This is my local MySQL, but you can connect to any other MySQL as long as you have the permission. The bin log format is row. This is what we want. Bin log row image is full and log bin is on. If it is not, you can set it up or if you are not the administrator, you can ask the admin to set it up for you. We are going to create a user. One thing I would like to say is the Maxwell is the directory in MySQL where Maxwell will store all its position and schema. This is our intention. So we have given test user all the permissions on the Maxwell directory. We will start Maxwell. Let's go back and uh, see if Maxwell has been downloaded. So it's uh, downloaded it's, uh, well. Let's start Maxwell. Maxwell has started. So as you can see from the logs, Maxwell is capturing this initial schema. Maxwell uh, HTTP server is starting on port 8080. It has connected to the bin log. Everything looks fine. And the bin log is at localhost. And this is the bin log file name and the offset it has connected to. Let's uh, have, let's run the Kafka console consumer, one consumer for the booking and one for the trip. We will be creating two tables. One is booking and one is trip. Booking table will contain the ID as primary key and trip table will also contain ID as primary key. Both tables will be under real-time analytics database. 
Booking table will contain the information related to the booking, which user requested for the booking from which location, at what time. And uh, the trip table will contain the information about the trip, like corresponding booking ID, what was the source latitude, longitude, what was the destination latitude, longitude, how much time did it take for the trip, and uh, when was the record created or updated. Let's create these uh, tables. But before we create that, let's run the Kafka console consumer for corresponding Kafka topics. These topics would not have been created yet because we have not started to push any message to MySQL. But uh, let's have this consumer running. And uh, we have two consumers, one for the booking and one for the trip. And one more consumer where the DDL will be placed. So MySQL underscore DDL is the Kafka topic where the DDL changes happening from the RDS or the MySQL will be placed. Uh, when I say RDS, it, uh, uh, it's however related to AWS, but just understand it's uh, uh, RDBMS, uh, what I mean. Now, let's try to create a uh, database if it not exists and create a table if it not exists. Uh, in the MySQL. Okay. Maxwell is running and Maxwell has some logs for us and these logs are related to the events Maxwell has processed. In the Maxwell DDL Kafka topic, we have the information like what was the type? It was a table create type. What was the database? What was the table? What is the definition of the table? which includes database, which includes uh, the primary key and the other columns. Also, what was the SQL? So you get entire information of table creation. Similarly, this second record is for the trip table, which was created along with its definition and the SQL, which was used to create the table. And every, this was so instant. You created the table over here in MySQL and we got the message in no time just with some milliseconds of latency into our Kafka topic. Okay, so this has uh, increased our excitement into MySQL. Let's see what happens if we insert some records, one into the booking table and one into the trip table. We have done that. Let's go to the console consumer. Oh, they are here. You have one message in, the, in each Kafka topic. So you see, this is the table booking. The type of the record was insert. This is the TS coming from uh, bin log. This is the transaction ID and this is the commit information. The actual point is this is the data. The data contains all the, it, it contains JSON with key value pairs. Key is the field name and value is the content of the column from MySQL. Same happening for trip. Let's go ahead and uh, add some more records uh, into our uh, RDS, uh, sorry, <laughs> MySQL. And uh, the way we do it, we have added four more records and we can see that one, two, two records each in booking and two records in trip, they have been captured to MySQL by Maxwell. So this is our Maxwell. One important point to note here is Maxwell uh, uses, uh, we are, have specified to use Maxwell as the database to contain all the schema and positions. So if we go inside the Maxwell database and if you take a look at the tables, there are tables which are used internally by Maxwell. One of the table is positions. And if I do a select star from positions, you will be able to see that client real time injection. This is the same client ID we mentioned in the configuration has successfully read till this position in this bin log file. Now let's go ahead and make some more changes to our data. Let's update the booking table and the trip table one record each and let's go here and see what happens now the moment we update we get a json representation of our record with the type as update earlier it was insert for the previous entries now it is update with all the information like what was the timestamp uh, what was the thread and server id and this is the data data contains what is the latest entry in the mysql and we also have old like what got updated so we will see that latitude and updated at these two fields were affected and 
currently data looks like this it's uh, a json you can parse it by any other system in your downstream application similarly for the trip table one update has happened this is how the data looks like now and this is how the old data looked only the fields which got updated are mentioned in the old if you happen to delete a record from mysql let's see what happens then we are going to delete one record each from trip and booking that is also captured you see a type as delete coming up in your kafka topic with all the data like this is how the record looked like before deletion and other details as well like timestamp and transaction id similarly for trip table one delete entry has been captured and this is how the data looked like before getting deleted we have seen how we can capture updates deletes and inserts let's try to see uh, the metrics now AT AT is the port we have specified in our configuration uh, if you see back go back over here you see the http port is 8080 you can change it if you want but this is what we have specified and go to metrics you will be able to see maxwell generates lots of metrics and maxwell metrics is the prefix again this is what we had mentioned in our configuration if you have a system like prometheus and you would like to see uh, metrics in the prometheus formatted way you can go to the endpoint prometheus and this is how the same metrics but readable by prometheus the last thing is uh, let's try to alter our table and see if we are able to capture the ddl changes so far this is our kafka console consumer reading from the ddl topic and now we are going to alter the table and now if you see that the type of table alter has been captured so it contains details like which database which table was affected what was the old value the schema value and what is uh, the current definition uh, let's try to beautify this json a bit Not this one. So you will be able to see that this is the old uh, definition which contains all the columns information, and then you have a new definition which contains all the primary keys and other column information for the table. So Maxwell is uh, an interesting tool. It can help you achieve real-time ingestion. and which can affect your entire analytics pipeline to run in real time what we have seen is uh, how to set up maxwell how to run maxwell in your local you can again expand your maxwell installation to your production when running in production you would like to take care of infrastructure as a code monitoring over maxwell alerting over maxwell and uh, maybe applying your own custom logic on top of maxwell open source code in order to clean my uh, local demo what i'm going to do is i'm going to destroy my confluent setup which i had used for time being and i'm going to drop my databases from maxwell and i'm going to close my uh, console consumers so everything is now back to the clean slate so i hope this video helped you understand and unleash uh, the power of uh, maxwell and the uh, the elegance it brings if you have any question for me i would like to hear from you and thank you for giving your attention and uh, watching this video